Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode. Today, we're going to put some struts back in the RX-7. Stick around. All right, thanks for sticking around everybody. Let me know what you think of the new intro I've got going. It also gives you a great time to go hit that subscribe and like button. I see we're almost at 100 subscribers, which is awesome. Thanks to everybody that hit the, the subscribe button. Look forward to uh, making more and seeing how many more subscribers I can get. But uh, in the meantime, you came here to see me put some shocks back in the RX-7. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take these, shove them back underneath the car, and see if we can't get one step closer to uh, getting it roadworthy. So, here we go. I'm going to get everything ready and uh, stick around. Alright, thanks for sticking around everybody. Here we are. We're in my nice little shelter where I have my car. As you can see here, it's raining out there. We're under a heavy rainfall warning. Like 50, 75 millimeters of rain, something like that. So, what better day to start working on this? As you can see, we got nothing under there. I also don't have much for lighting out here. But, uh, as you can see, I have done some cleanup on the inside. I'll still be replacing. I've got new brake calipers, so I'm going to be replacing the brake hose. Uh, I've already gone and changed out the, a lot of the bushings with polyurethane. Even though it may not look it now, but when I did, they looked really nice. So, we're going to go and drop this shock here. Which, as you can see, I've already put the, the brake caliper on it. I don't have a brake rotor yet for it. I do have all the bearings and seals and everything. And uh, when I did this, I, if you saw in other videos, I got a new new mount. There's the, the second gen spring coil isolator in there. That fit nicely. The racing beat lowering springs that I, I powder coated satin black. So. Let's see if we can't shove this back up in there and uh, go from there. We just take off the, the four bolts. I don't know if they're all the same, but these ones are 12 millimeter. I got the top nuts threaded on, but I don't have them tightened down just to allow some movement here so I can hopefully get it over the, the ball joint here. Now like that.
One thing I don't have yet, I gotta try and find them or get some. So I don't have the bolts that hold it to the ball joint. So I'm kind of kind of at the mercy right now of that. However, that's the uh, easy part. Uh, like I said, I will be replacing the the brake lines. So I'm just gonna plug the fitting that's on the new brake uh, caliper. I will be throwing just a silicone plug that I use for my powder coating on that. And then we'll get the new springs ordered up. And, or the new uh, brake lines once they come in. Then, hopefully, we can finish putting everything together and get a rim put on there. So I'm going to go start on the other side and uh, keep going. Stick around. All right, we're back. As you can see, there's the top plate mounted. Bolts are all tightened down. My racing beat intake manifold that will be going on here. And then we got our shock, coil, everything all in place. I did learn one thing. Um, the brake calipers, if you put them on the wrong side, they don't fit right. I know you're all laughing at me now, but uh, if you put them upside down, this bolt here at the top, or this slider pin, hits the, the steering arm at the bottom and doesn't allow it to go into place. So what I thought the, the brake line fitting right here was going to face downwards, it actually faces up. So the, you get the gravity effect of the, of the brake fluid going in there and any air is going to rise up and out. So, with that, I have to go find me a couple bolts to uh, bolt the strut to the pitman arm there. And I'm uh, going to have to wait on ordering up some brake lines, wait for them to come in. But once that's all said and done, we'll be back with more. As you can see, I've still got the where the brake line's going to go. And just for the fun. Yeah. Piece of a rim. I've still got the rest of those to finish. But I can't do anything with it raining like it has been for the last week and a half. It's really slowed me down here at the shop. So I'm trying to get things done as quick as possible, but Mother Nature just isn't cooperating. So I'm going to end it for here. I might show you a quick shot of uh, what else I have on the go, but for today, I think that's about as far as I can go. I'm going to run into uh, in town, see if I can't find a couple bolts to fit what I need. And hopefully I can. If not, well, it is a holiday today, so I don't think much is going to be open. But uh, we shall see how it goes. And hopefully I can get something back together on these. And start getting the, thinking about putting the front wheels on the ground. So stick around, see what else I have on the go. All right, I'm gonna give you a sneak peek at a few things here. Kind of tell you, give you an idea of what I want to do and where I'm going. Like I said, here's the, here's our racing bead intake. I powder coated that quite some time ago for my last uh, attempt at restoring this car. It's uh, almost like a metallic rupiah color. Which is going to replace the stock Nikki carburetor. You can see down there, I have a racing beat header. However, that racing beat header may not be used for a, a much longer. You can see I've got a new fuel line run 
a fuel pressure regulator. I believe those are, are dash eight fittings or dash six. I don't remember anymore. But either which way, it did allow a little bit more fuel to come through. And I was gonna need some extra fuel for some of my plans. Uh, I still got the whole back end to put together. Because in my first attempt, and I still plan to, I'm going to be powder coating the rear housing. So I still got to get that taken out. The interior like this, I stripped it because I'm putting a lot of uh, sand deadener down to quiet it down, clean it up. And I had the interior redone. It's a bit of a mess because I haven't really been in here in the last couple of years. But you can see I've got a Alpine radio in there. I will be changing that out to a newer one that is Maestro ready. I've got plans for that, but uh, I'm not going to say quite yet what it is. So all I'm going to say is if you know what the Maestro modules are for my data link, you will know that they can do a whole bunch of fun things with the, the CAN bus system of cars. Now I know you say that this car doesn't have a CAN bus system, but it is, uh, I am looking into the Holly Sniper EFI system, which does have CAN bus. So I'm going to uh, play with those a little bit and see what we can do with that. But that's probably not going to be for a while yet. I want to at least get this on the ground and get the motor running again. And hopefully that doesn't take too much longer, but as we all know, it's perfection takes time. So with that, that gives you a sneak peek at what else I have on the go. I'm going to go try and find some bolts and enjoy the nice wonderful rainfall we have going. So normally I say stay warm, keep it loud. I'm going to say stay dry and keep it loud this time. So till next time, you know where to find me.